thanks for, thanks for joining. I'm Svet, I'm one of the co-founders of AMP Technologies. I'm going to talk um, kind of like a 10,000 foot talk compared to what everyone else has just done, which has been pretty hands-on. Uh, I'll try to make it interesting. Um, and I, you know, I think that the topic's an important one, and it's, it's closely related to kind of the core of what we do at AMP, which is our company. I'm not really going to talk about that. Hendrik, my colleague over there, is going to talk about it in, in the afternoon. Uh, but basically what we do is remote monitoring for energy systems, usually off-grid mini-grids in Africa. So this is kind of where the visual comes from. Um, so I'm going to talk, um, as I said, a, a pretty, pretty high level, almost blue sky talk about how we interface and interact with physical objects and how we do that in a way where it's not just the visualization uh, part of the stack that's open source, but how we, how we build that whole stack to be like that, um, kind of open slash open source. And I kind of want to put that idea forward and see, see, see where it lands. Now, just a quick show of hands, I know this is the IoT track. So who in here is using Grafana to monitor interface with physical objects that are not servers? or containers. All right, so almost you know, more than 50%. And this is, that's basically what we do. And it's, it's been great coming to GrafanaCon for the last couple of years and actually seeing a lot of folks who are doing that. And it's interesting how a, a toolkit for uh, visualizing essentially internet slash computer slash server metrics is so well suited to working with real life uh, streaming, streaming data. So, um, I've got a picture of an electrical substation, uh, which, is, which is one of kind of the, the anchors of my talk. And um, if we think about the SCADA systems that are, that are used to, for running these and for, for monitoring them, uh, they're probably going to have been built a couple of decades ago. Um, and they were not necessarily built with the internet in mind. So although the internet was around, it, wasn't, it didn't penetrate very far. It did not go into where the systems are. Uh, so there were air gap, let's say, not necessarily by design, but by coincidence. Now, fast forward to today, um, and we live in a place where most things are getting connected. Um, and with that, it's no longer simply safe to assume that a sensitive piece of infrastructure is, uh, is going to be safe uh, anymore. And, and we're actually also getting to the point where a lot of these pieces of equipment are being connected intentionally because there's great business cases to do that. Um, now, there's obviously no shortage of related horror stories here. I was doing a Google image search to get a picture of an electrical substation, and I looked for a normal substation. I didn't search for a hacked substation, but the kind of third result that came up was about a story from a couple of years ago in Ukraine where purportedly Russian hackers got into the control center of the utility in Kiev uh, and tripped the switches on 60 substations and took the power out of 250,000 uh, people in Kiev. So uh, I know we've all got our kind of favorite IoT vulnerability story, uh, but let's just make sure that we don't move in a direction uh, where that becomes a norm. And, and, and maybe we are. Uh, this, to throw some stats on the anecdote, um, it's pretty clear that IoT and uh, in industrial IoT is growing. Uh, every, everything's getting connected. It's pretty clear that the uh, attack vectors and the attack surface uh, the vulnerabilities are growing with that. Um, and according to this, 51% of a company survey actually don't feel prepared to deal with that. So. That kind of leaves a big gap of, of, of where do we go from here. Now, we've got the picture of critical equipment that's not, uh, you know, it's being operated by pretty ancient software uh, that was built behind closed doors and for operations that happen be behind closed doors, uh, which is neither secure nor particularly flexible. So what I want to do is quickly explore what a secure, open, and extensible technology stack for industrial IoT might look like. And again, just to kind of set the scene with some trends, uh, we do have more devices coming online, which is challenging. Uh, but they also nowadays have a lot more processing power than they once did, and there's a lot more bandwidth than we once had. So 
with that in mind, um, we can be a little less um, uh, kind of frugal with the resources that we use for this communication. So why don't we uh, embrace the internet and the standards and the protocols and best practices on which it's been successfully built over the past decades and why don't we um, kind of adapt those to, to, the, to the world of industrial devices. And, and part of that really is assuming that everything that you work with is online and that you don't have air gaps and that you know, maybe someone's going to break into your VPN and how do you, you know, how do you encapsulate those things in the right way. Now, I just want to sketch out what I have in mind. Uh, the diagram is pretty wonky. I'm not quite sure how it ended up like this. Um, but kind of from left to, to upper right and then down, let's say you've got, you've got a real world system that you want to talk to. And these systems are going to be talking some industrial protocol, be it uh, you know, Modbus or RS485 or you know, maybe they've got PLCs. But then pretty quickly, you, you're probably going to put uh, some sort of edge, edge gateway device there. And from there on, uh, let's say you're on the wide open internet and you follow the best practices there. You're, you're going to have an MQTT or HTTP API, obviously with SSL on it, that you're going to use to connect that gateway to some endpoint. I've said cloud endpoint, it obviously doesn't need to be in the cloud. Um, and then you're going to have some data store. I've said time series here because you will probably want a time series data store for your metrics, but you obviously have something else for managing devices as well. Uh, that endpoint is going to be working with those data stores to, to provision uh, the edge devices. And then from there, you're going to probably want to do some analytics uh, and some visualization on all of that. Uh, now, if you're going to put something like this together, uh, I'd say it obviously makes sense to go to open source building blocks just the way that the rest of the plumbing on the internet has been built up out of systems like that with open interfaces and fully interoperable components. Now, besides that, over the past few years, we've also seen a trend with open source adoption in enterprise being embraced much better than before. It's no longer something that's kind of scary and comes without any support and, uh, and with lots of blind spots. It's actually a way for large companies to de-risk their vendor dependencies and to ensure continuity of their operations if something goes wrong with, with a particular vendor. So open source is, is now a much bigger component of what's, of what's being used out there. In line with that, mature open source projects actually have a pretty, pretty high level of auditability uh, for security requirements because basically it's all out in the open. Uh, people tend to look at the code base a lot more than they would for a closed source uh, SCADA, SCADA system. Um, and when something does come up, it tends to get fixed pretty quickly. Uh, and also, if you have a good project, you probably have interfaces that are well designed, well documented, and have flexibility and robustness in mind when you've done that. Now, so here are some of my suggestions for what this stack looks like. You know, this is basically based on what we use. I'm sure everybody else has their favorites. Um, but just to mention a couple of these, I mean, obviously we've got Grafana, and I think that Grafana really stands out in terms of its best practices for extensibility, interoperability. You know, you can do everything via an API. Um, and the way that a Grafana, the ethos that Grafana takes with approaching the ecosystem uh, is, is what I feel ought to be replicated across this chain. Um, now, just a couple others that I'd like to call out. Um, and some of these you've probably heard of, or um, some others may be less familiar, but uh, LoudML, for example, uh, which I've put next to Capacitor for analytics, is, a, is, an, an, is an engine for doing machine learning on time series data uh, with a particular focus on anomaly detection. Now, that's obviously something that you know, everybody's interested in at the moment. You've got all this data streaming in, and you want to make sure that you're making sense of it. And we're getting tools like that that are fully open source that just literally plug into uh, everything else that's going on here and, and can get you these great insights uh, kind of off, you know, off the shelf, literally. Another one that I've got on here is, uh, is EdgeX Foundry, which is a project run by the Linux Foundation, uh, which, is, which is quite ambitious. And it's only really kind of come together over the last couple of years. And the level of maturity is maybe still not where uh, 
you know, a lot of a lot of very serious enterprises are rolling out at scale, uh, but they're doing some really fantastic work, turning into a, a fully interoperable kind of cross-vendor platform for edge and fog computing. And the ethos here basically is API first. Everything interconnects with everything else via very well documented interfaces, and you can plug and play different uh, different objects, different services, uh, different microservices in this case. They get you the functionality that you need. They allow you to interface with your actual physical objects, uh, pull up that data, do some some edge analysis, and then push it up to your to your cloud or other infrastructure. Uh, one of the interesting things here is. In, um, is that they're even looking at having an implementation for this that runs on PLCs, so they can uh, get data directly from PLCs and push it up to the cloud rather than actually needing these uh, edge devices. So what, what's interesting to, to envision then is a picture where you don't actually have the edge device, uh, which, which is kind of where your secure internet environment starts. Uh, you don't have the edge device being a separate thing, but it's actually as close as possible to the actual physical object the control of that physical object is being worked with. Now, so, you know, wh wh where do we go from here? Um, gen generally, looking at these, the, the ecosystem shaping up gives me a lot, of, uh, a lot of hope that things are gonna move in a direction where we have a more open, more interoperable uh, kind of value chain of different components that work together for, um, for this. And although the barriers to adopting a model like this by the industry are pretty steep, uh, largely because of the fact that most of these companies are pretty conservative, there are some fundamental driving factors that I think will prevail. Um, so, for example, we know that there's been reasonably slow adoption of things like open source cloud, serverless even, by you know, companies like utilities. But the business cases for all of these are pretty, you know, pretty firm uh, and, and are prevailing slowly. So I think the business case that I'm kind of putting forward here for uh, adopting a stack like this will also prevail in the longer term. Um, then, of course, on the practical level, we've still got some of the challenges with actually implementing all the functionality uh, that, that we'd like to have here. And for example, while Grafana is, uh, well, while a lot of the stack is great for pulling metrics out of a system, processing them, and visualizing them, there's not really been an established industry standard for uh, doing kind of end to end configuration and control of these remote devices. Uh, and as a, as a front end, of course, again, Grafana is focused on this one-way data flow. Uh, so we, for example, are working on extending it into a situation where you can uh, have your, your feedback to your physical systems, where you can do configuration and control from, from Grafana plugins, for example. If you have any ideas on that, I'd love to chat later. Um, but yeah, this is basically what I want to put forward to you guys. Um, in the meantime, you know, let's figure out how to make the world software uh, more secure in a way that connecting everything to the internet isn't going to lead to uh, us all losing power or some other, uh, you know, well-known disasters. Um, thanks very much. I'm happy to chat more. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? It was just so clear. <laughs> let's uh, yeah, let's chat over lunch. It'll be good. Uh, just one yeah, question. You said that some gaps still exist, especially in the two-way control yeah. area. Are, are you are you developing some stuff to do more of that? Yeah, I'll, I'll repeat it. Yeah, the, the question was uh, I, I mentioned there's gaps in terms of doing two-way control and, and and whether or what we're doing to, to address those. Um, we're basically, I mean, our ethos at, at our company is to uh, find the right usually usually open source components that can talk to each other and do that. So we are actively exploring different options there. Um, but it's it's not even necessarily about the components, more about the architecture of once you've got the data that came one way, how do, how do you get the right commands to go the other way? And there's even things like, if you think of the logic, you know, is what logic goes in your cloud versus on the edge? And, and, and there, I think we need to figure out on a conceptual level almost how you standardize that. Because, uh, I mean, there's packages for doing logic, 
you know, there are plenty, right? Uh, but it's about how you actually put the right things in the right place and make them talk to each other in the right ways. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have the silver bullet yet, but we're definitely trying to, trying to get there. All right.